Hello, and we are so thrilled to bring you a Listening Library Fall 2020 audiobook buzz. My name is Jennifer Rubens from the PRH, or Penguin Random House, library marketing team, and I am so excited to be joined today. I wish it was in person, but this is as close as we can get right now, right, with the fabulous Rebecca and Emily from the Listening Library editorial team. So do you want to go ahead and introduce yourselves? I am Rebecca Waugh from Listening Library, and it's so nice to be here with you, Jen. Oh. And I am Emily Parliament, also from Listening Library Editorial, enjoying the fall foliage. And I was going to say, <laughs> I love that you have the atmosphere that's perfect for this book buzz. I, yeah. Our summer one, which feels like it was the other day, we should have all been in swimming pools, but unfortunately, I think I was in the same place. Um, so we have lots of wonderful, exciting titles to share with all of you, some that are out already that you may have heard about. Perhaps you heard about them in the book format, but you don't know about the audio. Perhaps you've listened already, or perhaps you want to hear some things that are coming soon. We've got quite the diverse, exciting array of fall 2020 audiobooks. And in case you're not familiar with booksontape.com, it's always great to remind you that's a wonderful spot for you to head to where you can listen to clips from all of our audiobooks, which after we talk about them, I hope you're encouraged to do so. You can also find curated lists to help you with your listeners advisory and readers advisory and lots more. So head over to booksontape.com. And then one more place where I hope you'll take a look is at this brand new website called The Conversation. And this is a Penguin Random House initiative. It's a wonderful resource of books that shape our anti-racist future. So this will be a great place for you to go to help you facilitate the ongoing discussions that we already know hopefully are happening in your library and in your community. And we want to help. So head over to tinyurl.com slash PRH conversation and you'll find lots of wonderful ideas. And on this note, we thought we would share with you um, some wonderful audiobooks for kids that we think can really help um, with this conversation. Um, and there are just six of them on the screen. There are so many more titles that fit into this important category, but we're really excited to talk to you a little bit about some of these. So... Anti-Racist Baby, that already, I mean, that's on my son's shelf in book form. And then I also have the audio book. And I love personally just the way that it's not just for kids, but also for parents as well. I think it really, talk about conversations. I think it's a really important but simple conversation starter. And being able to hear it really adds another level of accessibility for families to, to listen together and really have a conversation. Yeah, during the Black Lives Matter protests, um, when they were first starting earlier this year, um, How to Be Anti-Racist by Dr. Kendi was on the top of everyone's to read list. And this anti-racist baby really boils it down and it makes it so that if as an adult, you can kind of reiterate the points in your head in a very simplified way, because the, the book is a lot to take in. Um, yeah. It's a little longer adult title. And this kind of simplifies it, but it doesn't exactly dumb it down either. Like you still Not get all. so much. Yeah. And our um, anti-racist baby audiobook includes an author's note from Dr. Kendi, um, which it gives some um, insight into how the so it can best be used to raise an anti-racist child. I really appreciate having that addition to that as well. Um, and this slide is full of other really important books. I Am Every Good Thing um, is getting a lot of Caldecott buzz. It has six-starred book reviews. And I love what Booklist had to say. They really boiled it down that they said the need for a book like this at a moment like this could not be greater. And listening to the audio book, I, I love, you know, they talk about the, the joyfulness of the of the illustrations and I think that hearing an actor bring that joyfulness into the text and really allowing a child who's experiencing the book to hear that um, is is a really wonderful beautiful thing and so I, I love this audiobook as well. Yeah Derek Barnes is so great at um, creating affirmations and positive representations for black boys and this is you know a perfect example this um, and the king of kindergarten kind oh of that's stuff. another wonderful one exactly um yeah. they're they're just like so good at kind of being confidence boosters and 
it's actually in a similar way to the next book. I am smart. I am blessed. I can do anything. Just these like positive representations, affirmations, things that you can repeat to yourself um, when you're when you may be feeling down or. Yeah, we all need books like this, not just little kids. <laughs> <right? Exactly. laughs> You'll see going down the street saying, I am smart. I am blessed. I can do <laughs> And I love, too, I mean, like, you can see that one's coming out in December. I mean, I really love that we have a variety that's taking us, you know, throughout the fall and and really offering something to families who are looking for new listens throughout the year. Um, You can constantly be adding to your collections with these really empowering, positive listens. Um, And I wanted to quote Ruby Bridges herself for this next one, This Is Your Time, because she's reading the audiobook, which we're thrilled about, and um, her quote where she talks about, like you said, you know, that so much has been unfolding in our country um, during this time. And she said, you know, during the first few days of watching events unfold in our country, I felt myself waiting for guidance. And I knew many were feeling the same. Having spent years speaking to young people about racism, I felt compelled to say something. So it seems like her book really came out of this moment. And then she said she wanted them to hear it from her, that if, you know, you stay united and keep your eyes on the prize, change will come. And how cool that kids can actually hear from her themselves, you know, in her own voice. And hear her read it, which is the first time. Yeah, it's a really yeah. big book. It's the first time that she's read an audio book, too. So it's, oh, it's really? It can be shared with all kids and hear not just what she has to say, but hear it in her voice as well. Um, yeah, well, that's amazing. I didn't realize she had never done that before because, you know, I know that she's, as she said, she speaks to a lot of young people, but how incredible to capture that um, during this time and, and with this really special book that she's she's written. Um, and the talk, too, I mean, has, has a lot of voices on that, um, including the editors, Wade and Cheryl Willis-Hudson. Um, and this is another really important one, um, you know, that I, I like how, audience, how Audiophile, excuse me, said that this group of experienced narrators vividly presents a series of conversations with young people about race, and they make the complicated dialogue um, compelling, realistic, and moving, um, which I think just is such an affirmation of, like, why it's so important sometimes to listen and to really get, you know, get that dialogue right and, and make sure that all of you are hearing it in the way the authors intended. Um, and the audiobook really does a great job of, of doing that. Yeah. And the audiobook is, it is such a neat collaboration again to work with Wade Hudson and Cheryl Willis Hudson. And um, not everybody might know on the audiobook, Wade Hudson's brother, Curtis Hudson, um, composed music that's included on the audiobook too. Um, and he's a longtime uh, musician and producer. Um, I was a little starstruck that he actually uh, co-produced Madonna's, I think, Holiday. <laughs> I was so going to say, I'm like, you have Madonna. to mention Madonna. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, Get my think, microphone ready. <laughs> right, right. But I think this book is so special in the way yeah. that it gives you the tools to to dig in and, and have conversations about um, race in America and and um, and from so many different perspectives, too. So. Yeah. And another thing that Audiophile pointed out that I think is really important to note, especially to families, maybe they haven't listened to a lot of audiobooks before, or maybe they have, but these um, – Different short chapters can be listened to in any order. People can really, you know, take on just a little piece of the audiobook at a time and still get something really powerful out of it. And I think it makes it less daunting to say to somebody, you know, you have to listen to an entire audiobook with your kids all at once. Sometimes, as you know, we all know that's not always possible in terms of planning your your time. And I think that, you know, is great that it can be enjoyed and, and a lot can be taken from it just in little bits as you go through various parts of your day. Um, and finally, on this slide, I mean, I think we're all familiar, hopefully, with Nick Stone, um, who actually also appears on the audiobook herself. She narrates her author's note um, and talks about the inspiration for this. But she's had a really wonderful collaboration with narrator Dion Graham over the years. So I'm thrilled that he's back for this one. Yeah, Dion Graham has narrated just about all of um, Nick Stone's audiobooks, with the exception of Jackpot, because that was an author read as it was told right. from a female perspective. Yeah. But she can do she it all. Has, yeah, she, she really is. can. And she has such a rising profile. And I can't think of anyone more deserving. 
Um, yeah. She's a fixture on the conference circuit, yeah. and her social media presence has just been blowing up. Um, this is an unflinching look into the flawed practices and silenced voices in the, the American juvenile justice system. It's a sequel to Dear Martin, which is something that fans have been waiting for, and it's a really exciting publication. Yeah, and if you haven't yeah. offered to people Dear Martin on audio as well, that's also read by Dion. He's won Audio Felt Earphones Award awards already for both this new one and Dear Martin, as well as Clean Getaway, which was a recent um, Nick Stone release. So he's he's won rave reviews for all of these things. Um, yeah. Really powerful. She can do middle grade. She can do YA. She can do anything. And it's great that listeners can really grow with her as well if they've started with something younger and and there's more waiting for them. And then I just wanted to give a sneak peek behind the scenes too, because we've talked a little bit about some of these narrators and just to see um, the faces behind the voices um, meet the voice. Speaking of voices, I just had to point out that um, anti-racist baby is read by Shana small and there's a new YouTube series out from Penguin Random House audio called meet the voice where you can get to know a little bit more about the background of these actors who bring these stories to life so brilliantly. So the premiere episode starred Shana small um, and she talks about um, various productions she's worked on, including The Vanishing Half, which is an adult title by Britt Bennett. Um, but it's a really highly, I highly recommend checking out this series for all audiobook fans. And it's wonderful for you to pass on to your patrons and parents and teachers and anyone who wants to know a little bit more about narrators. And then you can also see on the screen there Ruby Bridges, Dion, and um, Wade and Cheryl in the studio themselves. Yeah, cool. And then also speaking of narrators, although we'll be speaking of narrators the whole way through, but we had to shine another spotlight on a really uh, popular and incredible narrator named Bonnie Turpin, who hopefully, if you're watching this, you're familiar with her work. Um, but there are so many incredible books that happen to be coming out right now this fall that are read by her. She's been very busy <laughs> in her home studio um, but she's just to give you a quick background before we go into some of the titles. She's a two time Odyssey Award winner. She's a two time recipient of the Audi Award for Best Solo Female Narration. She was an Audible Narrator of the Year. She was Bookless Voice of Choice. And she was recently, a few years ago, inducted into the Audible Hall of Fame. Um, so <laughs> lots, lots of accolades there. So well deserved. And such a range of titles that she reads. I mean, this is only on the, the kids' side. So even on the adult side, too. I mean, she's read Underground Railroad by Colson Whitehead and the recent um, Transcendent Kingdom by uh, Jesse. Um, but these are some wonderful fall titles that um, we'd love to tell you a little bit more about. And I'm excited that she read The Greats by Deborah Ellis. This is one of my, like, personal favorites on the list for fall because I think um, it's it's by Deborah Ellis who wrote the Breadwinner ser series years ago um, and she um, always has such an international view which I find so interesting you know I love to read books set in the United States but it's nice to think about the wider world sometimes um, and for this book she uh, spent time in Guyana and spent time interviewing uh, children who live in the juvenile detention center there. And it's just this fascinating mix of it's almost like a Christmas carol story where this young teenage boy is visited by ghosts, uh, grandfathers, great great grandfathers from different generations. And they sort of give him perspective on their historical moment. Um, but he's also struggling with thoughts of suicide and um, and then in the meantime, there's this fantastical prehistoric giant sloth that is like roaming through the city. And she just, as strange as it sounds, ties all these elements together. And I think it's such a thoughtful depiction of um, the issue of suicide that maybe we don't have enough books about. Um, but it's also just such a such a great, quick, engrossing read. And with Bonnie narrating, I'm. Excited for that one. Oh, I'm sure she she really can do anything. I mean, just pulling some quotes to talk to you guys about her today. I mean, you know, for this is my America, which hopefully you've all heard a lot about. Those of you watching this, um, I mean, it won an audiophile earphones award, and they talk about, you know, 
her characterizations, how they're all equally well crafted. I mean, I remember when I first met Bonnie, it was when she won the Odyssey for the true meaning of Smack Day and she was doing these crazy alien voices. And, and, you know, and she's also known for the power and, you know, empathy that she brings characters in really serious situations. So, um, it's really fun to, you know, and she's doing corduroy. It's like, you know, I, I know. love yeah. talking about joyous. <laughs> Um, well, it's exciting to have Laurie Hall Sanderson's chains on our list. Of course, probably m- most people know this book, but it's new to our list. And so we were excited to have the opportunity to do this fresh new recording. And, and she's such a fabulous writer, too. So to, to have a book on our list is a treat. Yeah, and a, and a big fan of audio herself, I know. Yeah. And has narrated some of her own books for us. As oh, well. that's true. Of course. Yeah. Um, and fighting words, I mean, Kimberly Brubaker Bradley is another author who we know feels so passionately, passionately about audio. And, and so it really was a wonderful collaboration between author and narrator. And I know producer Karen Jakonski, they all worked together to make sure that the Appalachian accents and fighting words was just right. And that, um, you know, I know there was a lot of research that went into, you know, the work before she stepped into the booth to record this, which um, makes sense because because Bradley does so much research before, you know, her her stories are brought into the world. So um, and it's already winning incredible reviews. It has seven starred reviews just on the print side, and that's not even counting the amazing audio accolades that it's gotten. Yeah. So highly recommend that one. Um and anything else you want to talk about on the screen before we there's there's so much we could just do a whole webinar on on Bonnie herself probably <laughs> um but um moving along speaking of other accolades we have some amazing awards news that just came out this week for the top 3 in this in this slide they're all national book award finalists which we are so yeah. thrilled about um and and so each one of them brings such incredible narration to to the book I mean it it really elevates you know the book is incredible in itself and then each of these productions is just so special um you know everybody looking read by the author which you know is is wonderful to have her own voice behind this and then Alan Corduner I don't know do you want to say anything else about everybody looking um just exciting just that oh go ahead yeah, she's just such like a, a writer that we expect to see a lot more from. Yeah, um, and who is so powerful, and it's really great that we were able to capture this in her voice. That's so special. And then um, for the way back, we we have the reunion of an Odyssey Award winning duo. I'm so thrilled. I adore Alan Cordiner. Um, I think back, you know, right now this time, obviously Broadway is closed, but the last time I saw him was in My Fair Lady on Broadway and I got to say hi and I, I feel like I get starstruck just by hearing his voice because it's just, you want him to just tell you stories all day long. He has such a magnificent voice. Um, and he won the Odyssey in 2017 for Anna and the Swallow Man, which was Gabriel Savit's debut and now he's back and I'm so thrilled. Yeah. yeah I can't believe it was 2017 because it feels like just yesterday we were at the, that ALA in Chicago hearing stories about um him on the set of Yentl with Barbara Streisand oh, <laughs> oh my gosh he, he has I'm sure wonderful stories I and mean, he has such a way of telling any story I think um but especially this one because um, it involves um, demons and just this whole kind of sweeping historical fantasy that takes you on a real journey um, that I, I just feel like in his voice, it's going to be even more captivating than you could possibly imagine um, because that's just, you know, he, he can, he can read anything. I think he's one of those narrators, but um, this is wonderful for people who love listening to Neil Gaiman and Philip Pullman. And I think, um, you know, it, it'll really fit well into that category for for fans of historical fantasy. But really, anyone who wants to hear a top notch, masterful storyteller and narrator, you know, paired together. Um, and just to give you a little bit more, because this is one that isn't out yet. So um, this follows two teens on a journey through the far country, which is a Jewish land of spirits and demons. 
And for the Jews of Eastern Europe, demons are everywhere. They're dancing on rooftops in the darkness of midnight. They're congregating in the trees, harrowing the dead, even reaching out to try and steal away the living. Um, so it draws a lot of inspiration from Jewish folk tradition. Um, and it's a dark adventure that, um, you know, it's, I, I don't want to give anything else away, but you can tell from the accolades it's going to be really special and a wonderful audio production. And then um, when stars are scattered, <laughs> we all love this one. It's, it's so, a different kind of production, too, here, a full cast and a graphic novel audio adaptation. And, and I think full cast is such a – this is such an immersive experience, too, and, a, and, and again, an opportunity to really hear um, the voices of, you know, bringing in Somali actors to read – um, and narrate and just, um, I think it has this very immersive, all encompassing, uh, feeling to it that. Yeah. Almost. Yeah. It's, it's really special. And, and the producers really had to find, you know, different voices and different actors who they haven't worked with before to make sure the authenticity of the text was brought to life in, in the best way possible. And, um, they really succeeded. Booklist said that um, it offers listeners an experience of perfection in its storytelling, um, which is quite the commentary. And I know, like, our, um, Dan Zid, our head of the producer team, said that this really got him through the beginning of quarantine because it really, you know, takes you out of yourself a little bit and makes you think about um, where other people in the world are and, and other people's struggles. And I think that kind of empathy presented in such an authentic way for kids and adults is really important to remember. And it really takes you there in a, in a very visceral way. Yeah. And I'm thinking that it is a great quarantine lesson in that, um, Omar was saying that in the refugee camp, you're always waiting, but you're not sure exactly for what. And in a way, that's a little bit like wow. a pandemic kind of experience. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. And, and it makes you, you know, grateful for what you do have and then, you know, more empathetic towards others when thinking about their diverse stories. And isn't that the best thing that audiobooks can do? Um, and then these other stories, I think, achieve that in a similar way. I mean, all of these have incredible accolades so far, and we expect to be hearing more on the awards front um, from these. Um, the Catman of Aleppo comes out December 8th. Um, and that's one that the second we heard about it at launch, it just sounded like something that awards committees were going to love. Um, the beautiful okay. interiors and just the poignant resonance story and we're using a part Syrian narrator and we're planning to include some sound effects to really bring the Syrian setting to life on the audio but really exciting that's wonderful I feel like that's been happening a little bit more and more as, as I love all the additions of the kind of soundscapes that are often brought in when appropriate um, to bring these different locations to life and um, before the ever after, I know that has six starred print reviews already, but it also has an audiophile earphones award. They say that Guy Lockard delivers an outstanding performance, um, not surprising, um, of Jackie Woodson's brief, eloquent story. Um, and I thought this was a fun fact. Did you know that Guy Lockard is also a singer songwriter and he was a featured vocalist in the Trans-Siberian Orchestra? And he loves to pair his jazzy, soulful voice with dance and rock music. And I think the musicality, like knowing a musical background of a narrator makes sense to me a lot when you hear how they bring a story to life. That's really interesting to me. That's a fun fact. I didn't know that. Yeah. <laughs> um, and Jackie Woodson's another author that we have to say. I mean, obviously, she's read many of her audiobooks herself as well. She's incredibly passionate about the audio format and um, her lyrical beautiful writing is always such a treat to get to like close your eyes and just really listen to and take in. Yeah. She's an incredible writer. Yeah. Um, and then finally on this slide, the amazing award winning, um, Rebecca, um, is, is also here. Rebecca Stead, we love her. Um, and, and Rachel L. Jacobs brings such a real kind of youthful, authenticity to to her reading of audiobooks she's just a really wonderful narrator to make you connect with with the young voice um 
in this and it's, always, it's been a while since we've had a new book from Rebecca Stead, so it's always exciting to have something new from her. Um, yeah. Um, and Audifile said, uh, which I guess I kind of said already too, but you know that her the narrator's voice is just so perfectly matched to Stead's story about a tween girl who's learning to deal with her emotions. And I think there's such comfort in another kid getting to listen to someone else really coming to terms with how to deal with something. I think there's a comfort, hopefully, in, in being able to take this in, you know, the way that audio allows a kid to really step into someone else's shoes. Yeah. And it's an interesting view of divorce, too, where the parents yes. go along, but it's just not right for them to be together. So it's a good, good book. And then um, I know back to school is not – it doesn't mean the same thing to everybody this year, and we sort of had to obviously say that. So wherever you are in the world, in the country, whether you're back at school, sometimes the word hybrid is a buzzword now, um, or if you're staying home, these are all audiobooks that I hope will bring joy and and um, some great, you know, reading to your to your young patrons lives um, and this has such a wide range of ages on it that we wanted to share with all of you so dj steinberg's series here i come um has been a sleeper hit this year for penguin it's a backlist title and kindergarten here i come in particular has just been blowing up so of course we're bringing them to audio they're read by the author and his wife depending on which book you listen to we have preschool through second grade and um they're poems that celebrate mile and prepare children for milestones for for the school year so there some of the phone poems are funny some are touching all of them are just really fun to listen to. Um, and in Kindergarten Here I Come, at the end, there is an original song. It, I've been listening to it all day. <laughs> it's really? So cute. Yeah. <laughs> There's um, little children in the background uh, singing along. I can imagine listening to this on the way to school and just being so charmed and so ready for the day. Um yeah, it's Is a really the cool. thing in the song. I can't remember now. I it's, think it might have been. I I I wasn't hundred percent sure, but I think it's a child that he has. That that. Yeah. Cute. yeah. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. I have to go listen to that song now. Um, and also very timely. Good morning, Zoom has really come out of this moment we're in as I talk to you over video on our computer screens and I love this shot of Donna Lynn Champlin um, reading the audiobook at home in her closet which is not obviously perhaps the ideal way that we used to record however the sound quality is really excellent when you do this you have very well insulated padding um, and um, she's a pro you might know her from Crazy Ex-Girlfriend which is a hilarious musical series and um, she really brings this parody of Good Night Moon to life in such a funny way. She has so much warmth and such a great sense of humor. And I, I have to say, I love this behind the scenes picture. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It's been fun to see all the different behind the scenes pictures these days and all the different locations that are being used. Um, and some other fun ones for some of the older kids, whether middle grade or teen. Um, the campaign, this is Veep meets Parks and Recreation, but for, but for middle grade, which I love that combo. I think if that doesn't sell any parent who loves those shows on wanting to listen to this with their young student, um, I don't know what will. It just is, it seems like such a joy, and it's about a 12-year-old who runs her babysitter's campaign for mayor. <laughs> But it's a good, it's a, it's good for this moment, but I think it's, it's, what's nice is behind the story, there's this genuine feeling of kids can be civically engaged and, um, uh-huh. it's not, not in a partisan way, but just sort of giving kids agency and the feeling that, that they can be involved and care and, you know, um, and to, to be involved in their in their community. So I really love that about the book. And the author wrote a really nice author's note at the end about sort of when she was in middle school herself, kind of awakening to the greater world and politics and just, just being aware. So it's really well done. Oh, I love that. It's funny. My three-year-old asked me the other day what it means to vote because he heard my husband and I talking. And I was like, oh! 
what a moment, what a question, you know, and I think it's it's really fun to think about ways to present that to kids as they really start to understand what that means. And I and I think um, that's such a good point you bring up about this book. Um, and Summer of the Mariposas, this is a really unique one, I think, on this slide because it's a magical retelling of the Odyssey. Um, it's a Mexican-American retelling of the Odyssey and a real celebration of sisterhood and maternal love and read by the wonderful Kyla Garcia. So that's another wonderful yeah. kind of back to school. A lot of kids have had to read the Odyssey, but it's wonderful to see new retellings that can really put a different light um, on a story that you may or may not be familiar with, but feel like you should be familiar with perhaps if you're yeah. <laughs> an English I major like I was. Has been out a while and then sort of made it onto our radar. Um, but it's been out and I think it's being read in schools. And so we're, we're really delighted to, to bring it and out on audio and, and have it available that way. That's wonderful. Yeah. It came to us through a curriculum developer for eighth grade who said it was getting a great response. So, and that an audio edition was in demand. And when we listened or when we read it, we couldn't help but see why. So added it to the list. That's wonderful. And I love that it came from, you said, a curriculum developer. I mean, like, you know, the importance of, of audio and having that available, especially when something's being read in school, because as we like to say, and as you'll see on the next slide, audio books are not cheating. <laughs> I feel like I should lead a course of that every day. Um, so that's really wonderful that we can really respond to that kind of demand. And we hope that you as librarians and educators um, are able to get this in the in the ears of those who want it and need it. Um, and finally, this is a little bit more timely in a tabloidy way. Um, admission really um, steals a little bit from the, the recent scandal that rocked our country, right, um, of, you know, the, the, uh, the college admissions bribery <laughs> scandal, um, but, but told through the brilliant mind and words of Julie Buxbaum, who is um, beloved by readers and listeners everywhere. Yeah. And read by Julia Whalen. Approach. You can kind of see different people's points of view and and um she's such a she's such a good writer at writing about rocky issues like that, but but bringing this like depth and nuance to them. So Yeah. And I think it's interesting, you know, Julia Whalen reads a lot of adult titles and then some kids' titles, and I think this Shows you, I think it'll have a lot of crossover appeal as well, because I think so many adults have been interested in that story and um, are such fans of Julia's, you know, narration. She reads Educated and um, many other fan favorites um, on, you know, the adult side of our list that um, I, I'm I'm really thrilled that I think people of, of many ages will find their way to this to this fun and really wonderfully written um, listen. And then speaking of audiobooks are not cheating, I gave you a preview of that <laughs> lesson. Um, but here's some things from many different subject matters that all are really powerful, incredible audiobooks. And, um, for example, I talk about powerful audiobooks, super powered. I mean, I know this was written for kids, but I feel like anyone could use this perhaps right now. I just really love the take that two psychology experts are like making listeners the superheroes of their own story by really teaching you to find the, you know, power in, in what you're feeling that, you know, that you can identify anxious behaviors and the root causes of worried thinking and not feel bad about it or not feel disempowered by it, but really learn how to reclaim the power that you have, even if you feel anxious. And I think that's a really important lesson for everybody <laughs> to be able to, you know, take in and remember. It's a great one for a parent and child to listen to together because it is so empowering in that way of taking back control of your emotions and listening to your inner voice because it often is telling you something. Um, Renee Yen and Dr. Uh, Shafali were at the Children's Book Council annual meeting and they did a presentation where parents asked questions and it was so insightful the way they gave um, children so much kind of autonomy over their lives and encouraged parents to, and also the reminder to that 
there is no past, there is no future, there is just the now, um, and to be very mindful um, about what your um, how you're going through the world. That's really wonderful. And I think, too, the audio format, I think podcasts, you know, which maybe used to be more of an adult enjoyment or entertainment have really started, I think, to trickle down to all age groups. And there is such a kind of self-help angle to a lot of podcast listening. And I think that there's something really important about offering this kind of book on audio so that somebody who's really become comforted by being able to listen to um you know, empowering or inspiring podcasts or things of the sort can really find a similar, um, you know, comfort in listening to something like this. And it's something that if it's offered in your library or school, they can always go back to. And because it has that kind of toolkit approach to it that I think is really helpful to have in this format. Yeah. And there's so many kinds of listens where I think parents and kids can listen together, but particularly with this type of title and right now when parents and kids are really together. Yeah. Together. It's, it's just a really nice one for that. And, and I think one thing that's so interesting in their take on it is how, uh, in this time when we all have a lot of anxiety, sort of recognizing that anxiety doesn't go away, but how do you transform it or how do you, how do you live with it? It's um, they were really inspiring. That that. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, and then speaking of inspiring, um, the Rebel Girl series as a whole is such an inspiring, beautiful series. Um, and this is um, a new ensemble cast of fierce females. A lot of voices that you may recognize, um, but really diverse, beautiful actors and activists together to read good night stories for rebel girls 100 immigrant women who changed the world and we yeah, can do more what, um very important to note is that all of the women who narrate as part of this ensemble cast are either immigrants themselves or first generation americans and we have everyone from yvonne orgy from insecure which is one of my favorite shows to diane guerrero and lorraine toussaint from orange is the new black uh the hollywood reporter had an exclusive in late september announcing our cast and parade just named it a best audiobook of 2020 so it's very exciting that is. And Daphne Rubin Vega's on it too. I was a huge rent fan my whole life. <laughs> I was very excited she was on this. <laughs> yeah, we just, I, you know, I have to give it to Julie Wilson. She's always knocked it out of the park with these good night stories for Rebel Girls. But. And she's the producer, I should add, for those oh, of you right, who, yes. who do not know. Um, yes. And then moving into a bit of science. And grammar, <laughs> some other subjects that, you know, so, so outbreak was, is really a combination of science and history, which, um, I think how timely is this? I mean, it's a little eerie, actually. Yeah, it's a funny one because it published a while ago and has been a study seller, particularly in the school and library market, but it was never done on audio. And then all of a sudden COVID hit and one of the first, um, I guess it would be a COVID related submission that Rebecca and I got was, uh, the hardcover editor saying like, how come like this was never done? It's blowing up right now. So yeah. even and though I think the author was hearing from people even saying, why isn't yeah. this like audio? We'd love it. Yeah. Right. I think uh, the author was doing Skype visits from Singapore, which, you know, is also was a good early coronavirus location for understanding the outbreak. Um, and, you know, it sort of shows how these kind of viruses and plagues and fevers um, come about and they change the course of history forever, um, even though we may not realize it when the outbreak is over. And I think so many kids, this will be an added aspect to curriculums, perhaps, especially in science and history of learning about plagues, because it is something that suddenly so deeply affected all of us that I think, um, you know, this this may be a, or already is a growing topic in schools to really understand um, more about what we're living through, because one day people will be reading about this time, which is so crazy to think. And so um, going back and really understanding the other plagues that changed history is really powerful. And, and I think taking in 
you know, something that might feel complicated or maybe wouldn't be the first book that a kid might be inclined to pick up and read in terms of like, you know, science and history can feel daunting to some kids, especially who are overwhelmed by a lot of schoolwork. I think having the audio edition available is just a wonderful thing. So that's coming January 19th of 2021. And then finally on this slide, um, we all have the great fortune of knowing Benjamin Dreyer, who works at Penguin Random House. Um, but, and also we've taken, I mean, I know I've taken, he teaches like a, a course um, that you can sign up for to take and within our building. And I think who knew that grammar could be so funny. <laughs> I had a really bad pun I, that I think if he were, you know, grading my paper, he would cross it out. I was going to say, there's nothing dry about dryers English, but I think he would like groan and be like, no. Um, <laughs> but it's true. I think, you know, the fact that you can laugh while getting good advice for good writing is perfect for students. It's perfect for adults, which is why this is coming on the heels of his very successful adult version of this book. Um, but we couldn't be more thrilled that he narrates it himself. And um, this comes out next year. And, and it's, it's not just an abridgment, too, I think we should say. It's really been adapted to have examples that speak to that to a younger audience. So there's the wonderful adult book, but this is really, truly adapted for um, a middle grade and, and above audience. So. That's and he great. enjoyed so, reading his adult book so much that he's coming back to read this one. So. That's great. Um, well, I think, too, because he knows how to, like, stand in front of a group and teach in addition to his day job that I think it makes sense he would be able to really bring the audio to life. Um, and speaking of author reads, other author reads that we're really excited about, I was commenting before we started on the incredible posture, of course, of – ballerina superstar Misty Copeland as she's sitting in the audiobook booth. I don't think anyone has read an audiobook with, with better posture than that. Um, but we have two author read um, audiobooks that just came out from her that we're so thrilled about. Um, her backlist title Firebird and Bunheads. Yeah, and Bunheads is actually the start of a picture book series that's inspired by Misty's early experiences in ballet. Um, she's just had an incredible career and continues to have one. Um, plus, she's an outspoken advocate for diversity in ballet. So between Bunheads and Firebird, which I can't believe we hadn't done on audio previously, like we've just kind of been – uh, amping up our picture book list in the last few years. And this was a backlist title that we just had to go back and have her record. Um, it is a CSK award winner. Um, and it was recently featured on the Netflix show bookmarks firebird. Um, but yeah, so happy to have Misty Copeland here. She's so cool. Yeah. And so yeah. many young kids look up to her and I think being able to hear her own voice is, is a really special thing. Um, and then Kat Dealey, speaking of dancing, um, so you think you can dance host <laughs> yeah. Kat Dealey brings the joy in you. Yeah. And just like she's a cheerleader on the show, she's a cheerleader for kids in this book. Um, she's encouraging young people to do what they love and find their bliss. And I love this Instagram post that you've included on the slide, Jen. Um, she, <laughs> Kat recorded in London during a heat wave and wrote a very funny post about how she'd do anything to get into air conditioning, including go into the studio to narrate. <laughs> Although it looks like she had a lot of fun doing it. I don't think it was I, – I, although her book is called The Joy in You, so I'm sure it was a joyous thing to read out loud. And yeah, then, I think she's someone who brings exuberance to everything she does, and including this recording. Yeah, yeah. I can hear her voice in my head already because I, I love watching that show and I love watching dancers, and so I feel like that's such a great way to describe it as she's a real cheerleader for positivity um, and encouragement. And then finally, this is exciting, and, and has um, Emmy's been making the rounds. You may have caught her on a lot of recent um, media. Um, but do you want to talk a little bit about this audiobook? Sure. So Emmy is Jennifer Lopez and Mark Anthony's daughter. You may recognize her from the most recent Super Bowl. Um, in Lord Help Me, she's writing some inspiring prayers that she speaks in her every day um, to help children connect 
in um the in the Christian way. Um and we have the book in both English and Spanish and MA narrates both of them, which is really great. Um there was a wonderful story that I was hearing about Mark Anthony and being in the studio with her, like helping her um with her vocals and it sounded like a really special experience. No pressure to have Mark Anthony and J Lo like <laughs> helping you with your vocals. But I guess when you're their child, you know, I would be nervous about it, but I'm right. sure she's used to it. Yeah. <laughs> I also love that we have um a, a secondary special in the vault, probably never to be released, recording of Mark Anthony doing both of these. <laughs> <laughs> And then also some exciting um, other author reads, um, the ship sieves. I love I love saying that. Um, the Olympic medalists came out with their first book and they narrated it together called the Kudo Kids. And they also, for all the librarians watching, um, you may have seen they did a wonderful video for the American Library Association just earlier this year celebrating libraries and why they think libraries are awesome. So a really great message for kids. Um, and we were so thrilled they could read this. Yeah, they came into the office and said that as kids on the way to and from skating practice, they would listen to, I think it was the Harry Potter audio book. Oh, right. So they have a special place in their heart, and they were really passionate about reading this. Yeah, that's so wonderful. Um, and then Our Subway Baby is read by the author. Um, that's a really beautiful, moving story. Yes, it's hard to talk about without crying because I cry basically every time I read this picture book <laughs> and um, <laughs> I during, <laughs> hearing about it at the well, end. Well, now you can listen to the audiobook so you don't have to, you know, he, he can keep it, you know, so you could hear all the words without having to choke through them yourself. Exactly. <laughs> I know. It, um, it's about a – so Peter's now husband – um found their son Kevin in in the subway abandoned and they couldn't you know leave him and he just had they had this special connection instantly um and it was at a time where it was very rare for two men to be able to adopt a baby together but the judge just saw the love for this child and had to you know help them find a home um together so this is just it's it's great because it teaches kids about LGBTQ history while also being such a touching personal story. And it's just a great story about family and how family can come in unexpected places and just kind of how these little moments happen that are completely unexpected but change your life forever for the better. And to hear it in, in his own voice is really powerful. And then and speaking of that, in, in his own voice, this memoir, Walk Toward the Rising Sun by Gare Duane. He recently did an episode of This is the Author um, that we're thrilled about, which, if you don't know, is a podcast from Penguin Random House Audio that lets you hear a little bit more. Once the recording of the book is done, the author kind of um, – Reveals a little bit about what the process was like, um, how they felt about it, their favorite parts. And so he recently did an episode of that. Um, but it's so wonderful to hear this in his own voice. I mean, he talk about a powerful story, um, you know, from being a child soldier to now. I mean, he's he's an actor. He's an activist. He's an ambassador. Uh, he's just so many different things and, and a really fascinating person. And I know that, like, you know, while it's important, you know, always, almost always for something to be word perfect in terms of the text, um, you know, I, I know with this production, um, the producer, Karen Jakonski, said that they really let him make sure that he was expressing himself through his own voice and through his own words so that what you're getting from the audio is is oftentimes, you know, just really the best way he could express himself um, in the moment that they, they loosen the reins a little bit to let him really um, bring his story to life in that moment in the, in the most powerful way, which I think just, you know, brings the text to life even more for the listener and, and is a really wonderful um, change in this case that um, I think is, is what a powerful experience to get to listen to him tell his own story really, truly. Especially when it's drawn from personal experience, you know, yeah. it's that sort of autobiographical connection to the material. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's really. 
I think it's a great one. To- oh, go ahead. No, this is a great one to pair when, with um, when stars are scattered. And there's yeah. actually the same refugee camp yeah. appears in both, even though Gare was born in South Sudan. Um, and it's also, if you like Dave Eggers, What is the What? I think you'll love this. That's a great comp for this. Um, and then moving on, um, some laugh out loud listens that, um, you know, I think kids of all ages and parents will love. RuPaul is on the recording of The Tiny Chef, um, which is so much fun. Um, this has been a really popular YouTube series, and what a funny character, and known for his funny voice. And so <laughs> to bring this character to an audiobook is just perfect and so much fun. This book introduced me to that YouTube series, which I actually hadn't known about before, but it's hilarious. And <laughs> and kids love, I mean, I was just joking to you guys, I have like fake food next to my desk at all times that my son, who's a toddler, brings me from his kitchen. <laughs> so I love anything like this that, you know, can can introduce kids to more of the joy of, of cooking. I think there's a fascination with that, especially because they see their family or other people do that. And, and it's just such fun and, and such a joyous way for kids to fall in love with this character. And then RuPaul's got such a wonderful energy. Yeah. Yeah. And then I love really. Oh, go ahead. It, it's just also a really great lesson because it has this whole soundscape kind of experience. Um, you can actually on our Instagram, the PRH audio that you, you can listen to a clip with um, some visuals behind it. And it's just so much fun. Yeah. I really enjoyed that. <laughs> and then speaking of fun visuals, so we have when Remy met Remy, I love this on their yeah. Instagram. What are the chances the author um, Remy meets the narrator Remy? Um, and this is the second book they've collaborated on. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, Remy, the author, um, just has such a great balance of heart and humor, and these are such special stories, and, you know, it's great that the author and narrator have become friends because they're the perfect pairing. I love stories like that. (laughs) And then also just announced recently, Lil Nas has C is for Country Coming, which is a, a picture book. Um, but he should be behind the mic recording, I believe, or maybe we'll see. We'll see. (laughs) Hopefully fingers crossed, but whoever reads this, um, celebrities, but yeah. Yeah. But a wonderful, um, book that just drew so much excitement when it was announced, um, just recently. So we're thrilled to have the audio of that. Um, and then also I know we've, we have, Oh, let me get my props ready. Yeah. Narwhal and Jelly. <laughs> so I love that this audiobook exists now. We wanted to play a clip in this, but we thought rather than deal with possible technical difficulties, go to booksontape.com and listen to a clip from any of the Narwhal and Jelly books because they are amazing, amazing audiobooks. I think I said this before that when I read these graphic novels to my child, I feel a lot of pressure because <laughs> I feel like they're just, I, I want to do all the voices justice and they're just so much fun. And I feel like there aren't a lot of graphic novels perhaps for this age group. So it's a different thing for me to read versus a lot of the other books that I'm more used to reading to him. And um I love that this exists now and that it can bring it to life in a whole different way. It's just such an immersive under the sea adventure. It's really cute. And truly laugh out loud funny. I, I felt this recording just absolutely brought out the humor and the, it just adds a layer of fun to listening to them. And the sound effects are just a hoot. It's so good. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, okay. Oh, go ahead. I was going to say there aren't that many books for gender creative children that are purely fun. And Narwhal and Jelly is one. Um, we use non-binary actor Sox Whitmore as the voice of narwhal and there are no pronouns used for jelly in the books so (laughs) if you kind of want something that's fun and non-binary and maybe kind of fits into that way it it works as well yeah that's great and the author is involved as well so you can also hear him on the recording um and then max and the midnights is a really special Full cast production and another one that really incorporates um, really fun sound effects into the writing. Um, 
because it does have to be like really transformed into script form for audio. And, um, and what's cool about this, I know with the first one, which, you know, was different than this time that we're recording in right now, obviously of, of quarantine and COVID. Um, but a lot of the actors perform scenes together in the booth, like standing up behind microphones, um, in almost like a radio drama style way. Um, for the first Max and the Midnight's book. But I think what's great is that this reunites a lot of the same cast and they already have a familiarity with doing those scenes with each other and great memories of that. So that energy continues into this next one, the Battle of the Bodkins. Absolutely. <laughs> and um, so, again, I think, yeah, the, the, the full cast, the sound design, the sounds and music, it's just um, a really fun um audiobook that you know you don't miss the visual when you hear the way that it's been transformed for audio um and then finally on this slide some other great series owen colfer is back with the foul twins nathaniel parker has won lots of fan <laughs> fan favorites fandom and, and awards he won an odyssey honor for um for an artemis foul book and um this is a wonderful one we're so thrilled it's coming october 20th so exciting then, in return yeah yeah and then Alvin Ho is back, which is a series that has been done by us in Listening Library over the years. And um, and Everett Plen is back to narrate, which is really amazing because he started this when he was a little kid, right? Or, or years ago. I know. It's, he was 10 years old, I think. Oh. Was 10. And then now he's returned as an adult to read again. So I love that continuity there. Um, oh. But still has the same charming kid-like voice and and uh and i love that we can offer more in this series from from kids who have you know grown to love it so much um and then finally we're almost done we had so many things to talk about we could have gone on and on but just as we head into the holiday season um there's lots of exciting things coming to film and tv um that also happen to be wonderful books and incredible audiobooks Jingle Jangle is read by Felicia Rashad. How exciting is that? She's in the movie and on the audiobook. And she, yeah, she's. And we'll have music from the film on the audio as well. Oh, oh that's exciting. so yeah. great. Yeah. And that when they played the trailer in the office, I mean, the movie looks so good. I think this book is going to be so fun. And um, for those of us who love Christmas and just that seasonal time, I think this is just going to be such a great, like, perennial favorite. And we were really thrilled that Felicia Rashad was able to, to narrate. She's the narrator in the movie as well. Oh, I was so excited to see her name come across our casting announcements when that came through. Um, go Dog Go, I think that cover immediately brings back memories to almost everybody. You see it, it's iconic, it's memorable, um, and it's new on audio for us. So we haven't announced a narrator yet, but we're thrilled to have this on our list. Yeah. Um, I can't believe we didn't publish before. <laughs> <laughs> And we're also going to have Are You My Mother, which is another I, one that's crazy that we haven't had. <laughs> I know. I've read that book even recently um, to my son. I think, you know, it's they're, they're timeless for a reason, and kids really find such comfort in them that it's really wonderful when you can have an incredible actor bring it to life on audio, too. Um, and then Mind the Gap, Dash and Lily is back and also coming to Netflix on November 10th. Um, but Ryan Gessel and Tara Sands are back. They've read um, Dash and Lily audiobooks before. I think this might be their third time coming back um, as this duo on audio, I believe. But, um, uh, you know, I mean, I think, you know, this is such a beloved series, beloved authors, David Levithan and Rachel Cohn. Um, so this will be a really, you know, I think in demand one and, and go back and find the others in the series as well, because I think kids who fall in love with the Netflix um show will also hopefully want to revisit the books and the audiobooks and these narrators are just fantastic. 
Yeah, I think Netflix is quickly owning the Christmas movie market. Um, <laughs> I spend a lot of December watching their Christmas movies and their like growing, ever growing Christmas universe. Um, and I'm especially excited for Dash and Lily because I think it was filmed outside of our office at Seven. Really? <laughs> I I remember a few days going to work and seeing like, uh, sorry, you can't cross this street <laughs> filming Josh and Lily posters. So I'm hoping that we the office we never see anymore. See some midtown appearance. I'll look for you. <laughs> I feel like I'm that annoying person who's like, well, I have to go inside, and uh, and the poor PA is like, but I'm doing my job. <laughs> Um, and then finally, um, everybody's fallen in love with his dark materials on HBO. Everybody's been a longtime fan of Philip Pullman. And this new um, book and audio book from Philip Pullman is read by an Oscar award winning actress, Olivia Coleman, who I still think gave the funniest Oscar acceptance speech I've ever seen for best actress when she won for the favorite. Um, it's, she, she's just very funny and not. And she just seems so surprised by it that she and she's just hysterically funny. Um, so it was just I highly recommend watching that. But I think, you know, just knowing her voice and knowing her humor, but also the way that she can play any role as well, because you've seen her do comedy and Fleabag and then, you know, the favorite. And she's just done so many different things that I, I'm thrilled that this is something that she's she's new to our audiobook list as a narrator and it'll be so much fun to hear her bring the story to life. Yeah. Um. And we reached reading Rebecca and I recently had the distinct privilege of being a WebEx call with a Pullman and we got confirmation that it should be pronounced Serpentine. Not serpentine. serpentine. Right. Thank you. Serpentine. And another benefit of audio, all your young patrons will know how to pronounce everything because they've listened and they know how to pronounce. But that is really important and good to know. Um, and it's been so much fun talking to all of you. We, we could have gone on forever. So we just decided we had to throw some others on the screen for you in case you've missed these audiobooks or have heard about them coming, um, some additional fall highlights that are just really incredible audio productions. Okay. And um, anything else to add before we say goodbye for this fall buzz? I think that's it. Thank you so much for having us join you, and happy fall to everyone. Happy listening. Happy listening, and um, again, head over to booksontape.com um, where you can find all of these titles and many more and listen to clips from everything, um, and we hope that you'll um, connect with us there and connect with audiobooks and all of your, in all of your communities and with all your young listeners. So thank you so much. Take care. Thank you. Bye. Thanks.